the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. And getting us to point toward corruption. And we got to watch out for that. So you, you can see in Genesis 3, 6, after the devil got her focus in the wrong direction, the woman, uh, it says here in verse 6, it said, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, all right, now that all the other trees were good for food, she very experienced another tree that was good for food. All of a sudden now, she got been, she'd been pointing toward a direction, toward something now, and said it was good for food. And that it was pleasant to the eyes. You see, that we're talking about, we're talking about desires or lust. It, it, it just, it gets us, we got to watch what we are desiring, right? Because it is said, in a tree to be desired, look at that, to make one wise. So now we're sitting there, the, whoa, wait a minute. This, 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 this desire, all of a sudden now, has the wrong focus, the wrong direction. Uh, and, and like I said, is they obviously had desires in the garden, but until it was brought to their attention by another source, come on now, by another source, that source pointed them in another direction. That all of a sudden now they desire something that was uh, prohibited for them was uh, forbidden for them to, to, to look at, forbidden for them to, to eat. And, and they knew that, but that other source, other than God, because the source that came from God said, do not eat from that tree. And they knew that's what the God, that was God, the source, the true source already said, leave that tree alone. But nope, uh, you gotta watch out, just saying that I believe Listen to the source that is coming to you and always make sure that the source, God, has higher priority than any other source in your life. Don't, don't let people uh, break, be another source for your directions in life. And then watch out for your own flesh, right? But your flesh sit there and get pointed in the wrong direction points to a corruption, next thing you know, now you're going to sit there and, and, and uh, start taking action to, to accomplish that desire that has been uh, for, uh, forbidden for you. And look what she said. And she took all the fruit thereof and did eat, and also gave to her husband, and he did eat. And that where the fall came in when they desired a forbidden object. And in many of us, we come in as children, we're raised by our parents, and in most cases, I'm, I'm saying in most cases, our parents gives us instruction, gives us warning, warns us off on different things, making us go to, uh, to, to, to eat right and, and don't lie and and, and you know, you discipline us and say, you, you know, focus on doing the right thing. And then we go to school. And as we get older, we allow other sources now to start speaking into our life. And a lot of those sources, because I guarantee you, it, it, a lot of sources start pointing us in the wrong direction. And unfortunately, sometimes you may be raised by parents who bring in a source that they receive knowledge on that didn't come from God. And then that now caused you even more problem because you you raised by people who, if they in darkness, such as hate uh, or prejudice or racism or any other part of how they live, and they teach you that, they teach you corruption, they teach you death, they cause you to desire the thing that can destroy you. So you really gotta watch out for that. And and I, you know, one of the people brought up, like I said, is desire itself is not necessarily, or, or lust itself is not necessarily bad until it's pointing at a corrupt source. 
because I, you know, we put in there, and I want to make sure I left that scripture there, Galatians 5, 17. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so you cannot do the things that you would. It's showing here that that the there's a the flesh itself wars against our spirit. Our spirit, born again, is connected to the Holy Spirit, and our flesh in the spirit, our spirit, and the flesh are lusting against each other, meaning they're combating against each other uh, to try to do the things opposite of what the Holy Spirit is leading us. And we have to watch out for that. Uh, but just remember, uh, lust or desires can point to corruption or it can point to life, right? If it points to corruption, you're really talking about pointing to death. And that's something you definitely want to uh, get involved with. You definitely want to watch out for. So check your source. In the anatomy of faith, desire is the key component. It deals with just, it's, it's, you can go from hope. I, I, I put hope and desire is similar to one another. And really, I want to call it your hopes or your desires are blueprints in your mind. Blueprints in your mind what I'm trying to say. When you're operating by faith, the image that's, that's in the spirit, the image that's in your mind is a blueprint toward either life or death, okay? So you gotta watch out, what is the blueprint? What is the desire that, that, that you have? And see if that desire is something that really uh, painting a picture uh, to life or death. And we want to always point toward Jesus. That's why I said it's so important for us that we walk by faith and not by sight is to point toward Jesus. And I'm saying every ministry out there, you got to remember, we got to make sure we point toward Jesus so that people will have the right blue, uh, <laughs> blueprints that allows them to do the things they need to do. You know, when you try to use, when we try to use our own faith, uh, the enemy uh, is 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 willing to give us a blueprint for destruction, and that's why we got to watch out for that because we definitely want to have uh, the 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 uh, we want to make sure that the source that we're dealing with is is God. You know, so when we go back to uh, Mark eleven. Uh, started verse 22 to 24, Jesus, as we say, we walk by faith. And this is all about faith. You walk by faith. The first thing you got to remember is that uh, Jesus answered and said unto them, have faith. So therefore, the anatomy of faith, have faith, but faith where? In God. See, now we're talking about, Jesus said is, I want your faith, your desires to point toward the source of God. You know, we talked about it in the study. We said is that have faith in God's word in our life. In other words, we want to have faith in God and in God's word. And, and I want to make sure we, we talked about it saying is that we want to make sure that that word is is not just just the written word but the 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 hearing the spiritual word of god's voice speaking to us and we want to learn to hear from god you know the bible said is that those are led by the spirit of god are the children of god to be led is to be able to hear god speaking and i guarantee you, most people when they say they have heard from god uh one word from God can change your life. One word from God can change your life. And that's what God wants us to make sure we remember. We, we want to make sure that our faith, our desire, our hope, our expectation of something good. That's what I like about faith itself is, is, is the expectation of something good. As long as the source is God, come on now, then you have the right source. 
So you want God to bring what you desire to pack, come to pass. So we definitely want to make sure that we focus on the fact is that God is our source. We want to focus on God, the will of God toward our life uh, instead of the world way. Amen. We want to go by Jesus. The scripture 14, John 46 said, Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by Jesus. Oh man, I got to really put down that old statement that Jesse DePlanton said, you know, about sin, and you got to watch out for sin. Uh, and, and, and he said, Jesus, and Jesse said, said, sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and charge you more than what you want to pay. So we don't, we don't watch out for sin because it takes us further. It takes us further where we want to go, and it charges, keep us longer than we want to stay, and charges more than we want to pay. So you want to watch out for sin and focus on Jesus the way, because I like what he said here. If Jesus is the way, you can't get lost. If Jesus is the truth, you can't be deceived. And if Jesus is the life, then you can't see death. See, the wages of sin is death. Jesus' way is life. That's that's for us as believers, and that's for us, a lot of other people understand, that's why we choose to go the way and point towards the source, <laughs> God Almighty, <laughs> and we want to make sure we do the things that are right uh, in the eyes of God, we definitely want to focus on uh, the things that God says. God's way is leading and pointing toward life. That's why we talk. We walk by faith, not by sight. And the fact is that we are walking by the Word of God. We are walking by life, not death. And we got to make sure we don't never lose sight of that fact that we walk by faith, not by sight. You know, um, back to that part of Genesis, uh, I, I really think we want to go ahead and, and, and work, break down that scripture, uh, that passage, because like I said, it, it is the beginning of, <laughs> of the fall of man. And we want to make sure that we don't, we don't get trapped fall in the same trap. You know, one thing I liked about the uh, the Bible is the fact that it is talking uh, with the understanding that we are trying to use the Old Testament, especially, as an example. We want to use the Old Testament as an example. That's what, that's what the Bible said. These scriptures are meant to be examples for us to use and grow by so that we don't fall into the same trap. Uh, as as those who went before us, we want to use that, amen. So I definitely want to make sure we focus on that. And look at Genesis uh, chapter three. It says, "Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field from for which the Lord God had made." And he said unto the woman, "Yea, has God said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden?" And you got to remember what he's saying is, he's asking a question. He already knows the answer. And you already know the answer. Those, I talk about just, you know, you could take Adam and Eve to the side and just look at your own life. You knew the instruction that your parents gave you. You know the instruction that you get in school. You know the instruction, the laws of the land. You know those things. You know, in verse two, and the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. I mean, yes, there, I answer your question. But in the but uh, the fruit of the tree was in the midst of the garden. God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now, she added more to it, but the bottom line is she knew the main thing is uh, you shall not eat of it. <laughs> that, that, that's the key. And the same thing we talk about for breaking laws and, 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 and anything else that we do, we already know, most of us know right and wrong. Yeah, I don't think that's even a question for most of us. But verse four, and the servant said to the woman, you should not surely die. 
Now, one of the things I want to throw at you, and just just in life, when you and teach your children, listen, when you when we leave you and start getting you to operate and live in this world, if I told you something, and if somebody else tells you contradiction of what I told you, you need to tell them you need to back off because you're not my source of authority. My parents is my source of authority. And then for us as believers, as we move into life, we need to recognize and say, what does the word say? What does the word say? You got to remember that. Because if you don't remember what the word says, you're going to end up doing some things that you don't want to do. Even when Jesus was tempted, he told the devil, it is written. You have to remember what the word says. And when somebody comes with a different source, I need you to understand nobody created you, created the heavens or the earth, God only. So your source has to be the higher priority, that source, which is God, instead of allowing other sources. That's what we talk about in the media. That's how we talk about people get radicalized, uh, radicalized and so forth because they considered another source. Our source is the Constitution, right? So therefore, when somebody wants to contradict that, we go by the source. Verse 5, for God knows that in the day you eat thereof, you shall, your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You know, that that's a, another source coming in. She should have stopped it right in verse 4, saying, nope, you 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 contradicting God, and since you're contradicting God, I'm I don't want to hear what you have to say. You need to go on about your business. But no, she listened to it, and that's what we end up doing sometimes, listening to the wrong source. And and verse six, and like what we just read, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave it also to a husband with her, and he did eat. And then verse 7, and the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig trees, fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice. Look at that now. That's what I'm saying is have faith in God's word. Not just a written word, but the voice of God. So do you want to be able to learn to hear from God as your primary source? not other things, but look at when once you go into the following another source, when you do hear God's word, this is what they did. They heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God among the trees in the garden. And God called unto Adam and said unto him, where are thou? He said, do you know you out of place, young man? I sent you and put you in this garden where are you? You're not where I told you to be. And the Lord God called on Adam and said unto him, where are thou? In verse 10, and he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. That's what happens when we go up there and, and commit sin. And then, then he said, God said, who told thee that thou art naked? How did thou, hast thou eaten of the tree where I commanded thee that thou should not eat? Uh, and that young that that both of them now caught in because listening to another source now they're sitting there scrambling trying to figure out the best way to respond and and you know god said and the lord god said unto them uh Wherefore I commanded thee, verse 11, wherefore I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat. And the man said, the woman without gavest me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. And that's another thing too. We listen to another source and all of a sudden now we want to start making excuses and saying, well, the woman you gave me, I ate because she gave it to me. And the Lord said unto the woman, what what is it thou hast done? And then the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou cursed above all the cattle 
and above every beast of the field, and upon that belly thou shalt go, and the dust thou shalt eat all the days of thy life. And I will put in between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And basically, he, he started giving the consequences, because I said, sin has a cost. The Bible said the wages of sin is death. Sin has a cost. Because they was focused in the wrong direction, another source, they, they pointed, they, their desires pointed to a corruption. Now they got to pay the price. And that's the same thing that happens to us in life. When we start looking at another source and recognizing and not recognizing that there's going to be a price to pay when we point to a corruption. That's why in the anatomy of faith, our desires has to point toward the source of God. God is our source, not the things or the corruption of this world. And if we can stay focused on God as being the source, and we can recognize that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. If we stick to the way and stick to the things that are right, and our desires align up, we can walk by faith, not by sight, and we can have the victory, and we can overcome this world by focusing on what God says. Amen? All right. So I hope you enjoyed this part of the segment. Uh, this is a part uh, C, uh, and we're really part B uh, that we're going into. And, and I really want you to make sure, walk by faith, not by sight. Make sure the desires is focused on life, not corruption. If your desires, if your lust, but let's just focus on your desires, is pointing to a corruption, you got to change your desire. You got to say, Lord, I desire you. I desire your will in my life, not the things of this world. And you watch how God will make a difference in your life and in my life. Amen. Okay, I hope you understand that the anatomy of faith. Uh, this is part B. We're going to continue to work and break this thing down. But just remember, just like what the devil did, he took them off focus. He took them off focus. And that's what we got to watch out. We don't want to come off focus. We want to stay focused on the right things. And, and we want to make sure our source, check your source. Check your source in life. And, and just remember and ask yourself, all the sources that we, we, we deal with, are those the sources that created life? Or those all those sources point to death? And then in the end, there's only one source that we should have priority on, and that's for God. Man, life. If you don't know that, keep watching, listening to it. But make sure your source is God. Your desires, your desires is point toward God. Amen. I guarantee you, our lives will be much better if you point in the right direction. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the study, and uh, we'll see you next time. God bless. Bye-bye.